Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So, the Extreme Z Awakening details for the Int Angel Golden Frieza have officially been revealed, and there's been some mixed reactions to it from the community, I would say. So, in today's video, we're gonna go through everything first, and then I'll give you guys my personal opinions about how good I think he actually is. Okay, so... Uh, with that said, let's jump right into it, starting with the pre-Extreme Z Awakening details first for comparison purposes. The leader skill is Resurrected Warriors Category Key plus 3, HP plus 130%, and Attack and Defense plus 170%, or Int Types Key plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 50%. Super Attack, Immense Damage, and Greatly Lowers Defense, and Passive is attack plus 150% and defense plus 50% super class allies and enemies attack minus 15%. So that was the Golden Frieza when he first came out. Now with the Extreme Z Awakening, his new leader skill is Resurrected Warriors Category Key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 170% or Int Types Key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 100%. And 20%, so 170% across the board for Resurrected Warriors, and then 120% for Int Types. Not bad, pretty standard for these uh, new category lead EZAs, right? Super Attack greatly raises defense for one turn, I like that. Causes immense damage and greatly lowers defense. And Passive is Attack plus 250% and Defense plus 150%. All enemies attack minus 15%, super class allies and enemies attack minus 7%. Don't love that. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 100% when facing a super class enemy. Attacks effective against all types when there is another reps of universe 7 uh, category ally attacking in the same turn. So. There you go guys, that is the Extreme Z Awakening for the Int Angel Golden Frieza. And as I said, there's been some mixed uh, reactions to his details. Some people think he's, you know, more than good enough, whereas others are really disappointed. Um, I would say I am closer to the people that are happy with it, but I'm not like 100% happy with it, because I do think he has issues. I do think that there are a few details about this unit that um, weren't really necessary, <laughs> I guess. So first things first, he's getting a lot of attack. This guy's going to be hitting really, really hard. I've seen some calculations and at rainbow status, fully extreme Z awakened, you're looking at like possibly 8 mil plus attack uh, per super, which is really, really good, right? Like that's a lot of damage. And on top of that, he's getting the attacks effective against all types when there's another reps of U7 ally in the same turn. So this could be, um, you know, on a reps of U7 team or Universe Survival Saga or something like that. Um, you know, that's going to be extra damage because of the multiplier for attacks effective, right? And on top of that, he can get some good defense, but only after he supers. So... You know, a lot of people have designated him as a slot 2 unit, which is, I guess, kind of true. He is much better defensively in the second slot after he supers, so that's also a bit of an issue. A lot of these units we've been getting recently seem to be primarily slot 2 units and not as good defensively before their super, right? And, um, oh, also, the debuffing of super class allies still, even though it's less now, it's not 15%, it's 7% just feels very unnecessary, you know? Like, there's no reason for them to keep that. They, they could have just completely scrapped it. Um, I don't really understand why he's still debuffing super class allies, because, you know, if you're running like a reps of U17, for example, most of your allies are going to be super type, right? So any unit in the third slot is going to be a super type unit, most likely. And... I don't think it's a huge deal. I really don't. I don't want to like blow it out of proportion because I think 7% is like not negligible, but like, you know, it's not that bad, right? But it just didn't have to be there. It just did not have to be there. And obviously you can argue that he's not going to be 
uh, that good against about half, maybe more than half of the enemies in the game because he gets this additional 100% attack and defense only when facing super class enemies. So if you're facing extreme class, um, actually I guess there's going to be more super class than extreme class enemies in the game. Someone tell me the breakdown. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but the point is, the point is, he's only going to be impressive against super class. And if you're facing extreme enemies, he's going to be far less impressive, like far less impressive. When I said the 8 mil plus number for attack stat, that's against super class enemies, right? If you're facing extreme class, then uh, yeah, he's probably going to be somewhere in the range of like 4 to 5 mil, maybe a little bit more, but um, it's a pretty drastic drop off and defensively as well, pretty drastic drop off um, against extreme class enemies. So. You know, not not the best feature of this unit, but in the right situation, you know, with the right team um, against super class enemies uh, in slot two, he's going to be really good. <laughs> he's going to be really, really impressive offensively and defensively. He's going to get enough defense to like get you through 97% of the events of the game. Um, he might struggle in some longer events where the enemies start hitting really hard at the end, but um, you know, on like Super Battle Road, he'll be fine. On uh, Dokkan events, <laughs> obviously, he'll be fine. So, like, at yeah, most events in the game, he's gonna be okay, but the defense might not hold up quite as well on uh, some of the like hardest, hardest events, right? Um, oh, last thing I wanna show you guys is the or are the stats after the Extreme Z Awakening. So, before the EZA, you're looking at 16,000 HP, 15,000 attack, and 11,600 defense, right? And with the EZA, oh, they didn't post it here. Okay, so, I mean, he, they're going to get a big bump. <laughs> they're going to get a big boost. Usually they post them here. I thought I saw them. Maybe I saw them somewhere else. Okay, my apologies. My apologies. So, no stats for you today, but um, expect like a, you know, a couple thousand boost across the board for each of these. Uh, I'll just say that. Anyways, um... Yeah, uh, this EZA is, is is good in some aspects, not so good in others. I think as a whole, it's I I'm still satisfied with it. I I'm still I'm still pretty satisfied with it. Um, could he have been better? Yes, but is he bad? No, it's not bad. So yeah, that's I guess the best way to put it. There's not much else for, for me to say, guys. Uh, that is the Int Angel Golden Frieza Extreme Z Awakening. Let me know in the comments down below what your assessment of him is. If you're upset, if you wanted more, then definitely let me know what kind of changes you would have made or maybe just what kind of things you would have not included, such as, you know, this super class kind of thing um, or the, the debuffing of super class enemies or rather uh, super class allies. Um, or something else. I don't know. Point is, I'm not super upset, man. I'm, I'm not that upset, but I do agree with most people that he's not perfect. I wasn't expecting him to be perfect, so maybe it's about your expectations. Maybe people were expecting too much. Who knows? Uh, either way, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new. Hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And uh, until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.